When we visited the world's biggest computer market in Shenzhen, China, we couldn't resist buying this case, which comes with a handle for LAN party portability. So this is the, uh, the cool man. Before that, this video is brought to you by us and the Gamers Nexus Toolkit on store.gamersnexus.net. Our brand new toolkit just launched and contains 10 custom-made drivers for video card disassembly, repasting, and teardowns. The eight core tools are made of high-quality chromium vanadium alloy steel that's built for long service life and resistance to wear during use. The other two tools are carbon steel hex heads that were custom ground down for capacitor clearance on video cards. All the tools are easily mounted to a pegboard or stored in the GN made tool bag for easy transport. Learn more at the link in the description below. This is the Coolman three body case. We picked it up in SCGE market, which is in Huachan Bay in Shenzhen. It is to our knowledge, the biggest electronics computer hardware market in the world. You can buy everything there from MOSFETs, capacitors, all the way up to things like massive drones or computer parts like this one. So it's kind of an AliExpress IRL to take a quote from Keegan on our team. And it's got some cool stuff. It's also got weird cases. This one was about a $66 asking price. We ended up getting a, an amazing deal and paid only 60 for it. <laughs> got a 10% discount. And it's got two 200 millimeter fans, two 120 millimeter fans, and there was probably more room for haggling as well, but we we were willing to pay the the full price more or less just because we were being ignorant, taking a lot of time, and putting a camera in people's faces. So the enclosure has two compartments. It's got the compartment back here with the power supply, some drive cages, then the compartment over here with the motherboard. And Patrick had to uh, to chew apart the metal a bit on this side with, I think he just used like basically cable cutters for it. So it's not really the strongest steel because the way it was cut through was with these. So not the strongest steel on the planet, but I had to make the cut to fit our uh, MSI taller than average card. And other than that, it does fit the cooler barely. It's 150 millimeter tall cooler. So there's minimum clearance there, but just barely enough. And it does have RGB LEDs. It's also got LEDs in the fans, and it comes with a small remote to switch the colors around. So it's got everything that a modern case should have. It has big fans, it has glass and acrylic obstructing those fans, and it has LEDs. So uh, we'll see how well it does in testing. There is a piece of tempered glass, technically, in the very top here, but everything else is acrylic on the sides. And let's just go through Patrick's build notes, the thermal testing, and then talk conclusions. The most optimistic feature of the three body is the big yellow warning sticker that says, tempered glass, please handle with care. Both translucent side panels are very definitely plastic, not glass, as curved glass panels are a luxury even for major manufacturers like Cooler Master. It's not a lie since technically the small pane of glass on the top of the case is actually glass, not acrylic, but this is also the smallest and most hidden part of the three clear panels. So maybe they should have gone for plastic there as well. The fans and the shape of the case were primarily why we went through the trouble of buying this and bringing it all the way back home. Cooling is provided by four fans, two giant 200 millimeter ones at the top and the bottom, both intake, and two 120 millimeter intake fans, if you can call them intake, at the front corner. Exhaust is directed passively at the back of the case, hopefully helped along the way by the fans at the front. Whether the front fans should be called intake is debatable because there are no intake vents whatsoever at the front of the case. None. Zero. There are vent holes cut into the metal chassis, but the plastic side panels completely cover them. Our best theory is that the fans are supposed to pull air in around the edges from further back in the case where cool air is supplied in theory by the 200 millimeter fans. We don't need to wait until the thermal section to tell you that this is a bad design. Our initial excitement over the case and cooling was tempered with this closer look, but we had some ideas for how to improve it and we'll explore that momentarily. Unlike the fans, the shape of the case works better than expected. It's a given that any PC case that deviates from a rectangular form will pay for it somehow with weird cable management or lack of clearance for certain parts or bad airflow, or just inefficient use of space. Despite looking like a novelty case from the outside though, the three body fits components in a surprisingly logical and natural way. The side panels didn't offer quite enough clearance for our 
air cooler or our video card, but we've run into that problem before in normal cases. Both managed to fit well enough for testing with some creative hacking at the chassis that we were able to forge ahead anyway. The roughly triangular footprint is formed by a large rectangle that holds the motherboard and the GPU with a smaller triangle tacked onto one side for the storage drives, the power supply, and the cables. Space at the front corner is used for fans. The only thing that there really isn't any room for is the cables. There's a space provided for bundling them next to the hard drive storage area, but they have to be strapped down thoroughly to keep anything from brushing into the bottom of the case and getting stuck in the fan there. A single built-in Velcro strap is provided for that. As mentioned earlier, the top intake fan is covered by a pane of tempered glass. There are some small vent holes around it that might allow for a bit of air in, but they're mostly decorative, so that top fan can't really do anything at all. The glass pane is held on with some extremely grippy double-sided tape. Removing the pane reveals an almost presentable bare black plastic surface with some screw holes in it. So getting rid of the glass and flipping the top fan to an exhaust orientation could be a viable option. The bottom intake fan is covered by a much more practical mesh filter, although the short case legs don't really give it much clearance from the desk surface. There are also six small 80 millimeter fan mounts on the rear of the case, two behind the CPU and four behind the hard drive and power supply chamber. We haven't seen an 80 millimeter fan in a few years, but putting optional mounting points wherever they'll fit is an approach we can get behind. There are some other small but thoughtful touches, like screwdriver cutouts in the chassis for installing the GPU, and a couple dedicated 2.5 inch drive bays tucked beside the 3.5 inch drive bays. And those screwdriver cutouts are actually pretty thoughtful. We do give credit for that, and this is something that major manufacturers could do as well in some of their cases. We also have some complaints, of course. No motherboard standoffs shipped with the case, and we had to supply our own. Now, Technically, the shopkeeper did offer to include some, but we said no because we knew we had them. That said, it's, it's a bit of a different approach. She was going to dig through bins of screws and handpick them for us for the case, which is really nice, but that's a retail side thing. They're not included by the factory. They're offered at point of retail, which is just, it's interesting. It's a different way to do things. The fans have six pin connectors to control both RPM and LEDs and must be attached to the fan and LED hub instead of the motherboard. The hub itself does accept control via connection to the motherboard, but the necessary cable wasn't included. There's only a single USB 3.0 type A port on the front panel and two USB 2.0 ports, although there's a blanked out spot for a fourth port. The metal handle at the top of the case that should make it portable is sturdy and securely screwed into the top panel, but the top panel is just clipped into the body of the case without any screws, so it wouldn't take much for the case to fall out from under the handle, at least after you've opened it the first time. The bottom panel is attached the same way. Both were very hard to pull off the first time, but too easy afterwards. The side panels are held in by the top and bottom panels, so in order to remove them, either the top or the bottom panel must be removed first, after which both side panels flop out onto the floor. Reinstalling them is even trickier. Thermal testing is our next stop. Starting with just CPU thermals for only the three body, we'll look at it compared to other cases after that. The three body averaged 73.1 degrees Celsius over ambient for CPU temperature in the torture test, which dropped enormously down to 62 degrees delta T over ambient with the top panel removed. That's not a configuration we'd set up for daily use since it'd be extremely prone to collecting dust and leaving the panel off and flipping the top fan over for a straight bottom to top airflow path is a much more logical move that would resolve dust concerns. It also averaged nearly the same as stock at 72.3 degrees Celsius over ambient. This is an issue with suffocated intake. The case can't get enough cool air from the bottom or the front to even supply the top fan as exhaust. Keeping this configuration and removing the plastic cover in front of the LED strip at the front corner of the case resulted in the best result of all, averaging 60.1 degrees Celsius over ambient. Removing the plastic strip exposes a tiny area of ventilation to the two 120mm front fans, which are otherwise completely starved for air. It's ugly, but it works. Compared to other cases on our chart, the three bodies' stock temperatures are abysmal. Even the best case temperature, with the top and front panels removed, only puts it on par with the Lian Li Alpha 550 but it's a good indicator of what could have been. If the plastic side panels didn't extend all the way around the front corner of the case and instead left an area of mesh exposed at the front, the two 120 fans would do a much better job of cooling the CPU, although the extra parts and tooling would add to the cost. Giving the bottom more spacing from the table and 
opening up the intake of it would also help. The stock case is about the same as the Walmart case for thermals, and so it's one of the worst we've tested. GPU torture temperature averaged 58.5 degrees Celsius over ambient on the stock torture test with the 200 millimeter bottom intake fan pushing cool air directly into it. Removing the top panel had no significant effect, but flipping the top fan to keep air moving in a straight line lowered the average to 55 degrees Celsius over ambient, but removing the front strip to let the fans breathe at the front didn't really improve things any further. The GPU is directly in the path of the bottom of the top airflow pattern we created, and the temperatures are largely unaffected by front intake, which is mostly above the level of the GPU cooler. Comparatively, 58 degrees over ambient for the GPU is warm. 55 degrees with the alternative configuration is average at best, if we're being kind. It's equivalent to the original Cooler Master H500P with some room to breathe, the bottom fan could do a much better job of supplying cool air. The size of our GPU also limits how effective the vertical path can be, since there's little room for air to travel around the cart. Firestrike GPU temperature tells the same story as the torture test did. It's a warm case in the stock configuration, with the top and bottom 200 mil fans fighting each other and pushing warm air around inside the case. There's not a good way to improve on that without altering the case or moving the fans around. Even adding an 80 millimeter fan or two near the rear of the case would only benefit the upper half where the CPU is housed. Blender is last, starting with the CPU only workload. 45 degrees Celsius over ambient for CPU temperature when rendering on the CPU only is one of the warmest averages on our chart at the level of the Q500L. This is in the stock configuration, so the only fan that's directing outside air into the CPU cooler is the top intake fan, which is completely covered by a pane of glass with almost no ventilation whatsoever. The path to the bottom intake fan is blocked by the GPU, and the front intake fans can only recirculate hot air from inside the case. GPU testing with Blender is next. 29.6 degrees Celsius over ambient for the GPU with GPU accelerated rendering isn't as bad as the CPU was, relatively, but it's still only as good as the stock Define R6. The bottom intake fan does have the advantage of a mesh cover instead of glass, but the case legs are too short to allow much air to flow under the case and into the fan. This case was really more about the experience. We wanted to go to SEGE Market, see what kind of cool stuff they had, what we could buy and bring home. And we've been to Guanhua Digital Plaza before, which is in Taiwan, and it had some pretty cool stuff. So we thought we'd go check one out in Shenzhen while we were there for all of our factory tours earlier this year. We picked this up in late May, and then the first time we went there was in March. So it, and it doesn't, it changes a bit. Like some of the vendors will change around. So the phone booth will swap out to something else like speakers and stuff like that but they've got everything there the three body it was a fun experiment it has some potential this is a custom tooled case this isn't as patrick said to me earlier it's not the lowest effort case you can make there are a lot easier things you could do so there was some actual effort that went into making this thing it is not good though the i mean just it's got a lot of design flaws cooling is atrocious but could be made actually decent with some changes to the paneling if you lifted it up a bit off the base so that you had more than a couple millimeters of space for the fan to breathe, that would be pretty good. So we got some genuine use out of the big handle until we realized that the top of the case isn't screwed into the panels anymore. Once you remove it one time, it starts to fall apart. It's got cooling issues. It's got clearance issues, but it's $60. It's a cheap computer case that looks weird. It's got RGB fans, and it has four fans, two of which are very large. So $60 for all those things is competitive with pricing in the case world. It's just, it's still not a good case. It could get there though. The name of the company in Chinese we think is Wanjia, which is, I think it just translates to player, and it's the characters are a play on words or something. But uh, Cool Man is the name as it's written in English, and Cool Man, if you're watching, this is actually a starting point to a not bad case. So there are some things that could be done here to make the, I, I mean, you look at some of the cases we've reviewed lately from other manufacturers, like the NZXT H510 Elite, and uh, design challenges transcend all languages and countries. And this is not really, like the same issues we have here are the same issues we have in every other case we review. So anyway, that's the case. It's like 60 bucks if you can find it anywhere and uh, it is called the, the Three Body by Cool Man. Thanks for watching. Check out our SCG eMarket tour in a separate video if you want to see that. It's already live. 
you can probably click it in the link in the description below or something if you want to check it out. Or go to store.gamersaccess.net to support us by buying things like our shirts, our mod mats, or our toolkits. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.